30 minutes of the most shocking WrestleMania facts. Chris Benoit was considered for a WrestleMania 11 role. And heading into WrestleMania 11, WWE advertised that Owen Hart would receive a mystery partner. But there were various rumors being thrown around, and one of the names being considered was actually Chris Benoit. During an old edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer reported they announced two more matches for Mania, Luger and Davey Boy Smith vs Blue Brothers and Guns defending against Owen Hart and a mystery partner. No word on who it is, but do know that they are or were interested in it being Chris Benoit and shooting them immediately to the top of the tag team division. In the end, WWE opted to book Yokozuna as Hart's tag partner and the two embarked on a highly acclaimed run as a tag team combination. The Original WrestleMania 29 Main Event The original plans for WrestleMania 29 were always for The Rock to walk into WrestleMania as WWE Champion. However, instead of The Rock winning the WWE title from CM Punk at the 2013 Rumble, he would have won the title at that year's Elimination Chamber event. Additionally, according to The Rock during a 2016 interview, the original plans for the main event of WrestleMania 29 were to see The Rock, John Cena and Punk collide in a triple threat match. This is what fans as well as Punk were pushing for, but obviously Vince McMahon had other ideas and decided to proceed with a rematch between The Rock and Cena. Fans were injured at WrestleMania 24. As this WrestleMania 24 was going off the air, The Undertaker was celebrating his world title win with tons of pyro, yet this particular pyro botched in a major way. It was reported at the time that fireworks landed in the proximity of a group of fans and numerous fans were burnt and some were even taken to the local hospital. WWE were forced to issue a statement on the matter and they stated that they took solace in the fact that the injuries were minor. Vince McMahon loved the DX band at WrestleMania 14. WrestleMania 14 kicked off with the DX band delivering a painful version of America the Beautiful. Although fans loathed this version of the song, it was actually said that Vince McMahon was rather fond of their involvement at that year's Mania. McMahon's positive opinion aside, this hasn't stopped WWE from editing the infamous performance off the WWE Network version of WrestleMania 14. Hulk Hogan was told to leave the Ultimate Warrior alone at WrestleMania 30. The Ultimate Warrior returned to WWE during WrestleMania 30 weekend and one legend was given strict instructions to leave him alone. Due to prior bad blood between Warrior and Hogan, Hogan was informed to stay away from him during the weekend. Yet this didn't stop Hogan as he proceeded to go up to Warrior backstage and make amends. This footage was captured by WWE cameras and it was used for various WWE Network projects. The Undertaker was rushed to hospital at WrestleMania 30. The Undertaker was in such a bad way following his WrestleMania 30 encounter with Brock Lesnar that the dead man was actually rushed to hospital. Upon seeing one of his most trusted and loyal performers in this state, Vince McMahon decided to leave WrestleMania early and go to the hospital with the dead man. It's also said that Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman left the show early to be by the dead man's side. The referee didn't know the streak was ending. A Brock Lesnar defeating The Undertaker and ending his iconic WrestleMania win streak shocked the world. Nobody saw it coming and one name in particular that didn't see it coming was the referee for the match, Chad Patton. It's a rule in WWE that if a wrestler doesn't kick out, they have to call the match as if it's legitimate. So when Lesnar hit an F5, the dead man didn't kick out, Patton called the match as if it was a shoot. Andre the Giant drank to excess before WrestleMania 3. WrestleMania 3 featured one of the most famous pro wrestling matches in existence as Hulk Hogan took on Andre the Giant. It's safe to say that Andre didn't go into the match in the best condition as according to Hogan, Andre drank around two flasks of Crown Royal before the match. Chris Benoit's celebration has been edited WrestleMania 20. The original version of WrestleMania 20 went off the air with Chris Benoit celebrating with his family. Due to Benoit's actions in 2007, WWE have since edited this out of the WWE Network version of the broadcast. The show now goes off the air with Benoit celebrating with Eddie Guerrero before posing on the turnbuckle. Brock Lesnar almost squashed Goldberg at WrestleMania 20. One of the most anticipated matches for WrestleMania 20 was Goldberg vs Brock Lesnar. WWE's plans for the match were simple, due to Goldberg leaving WWE after Mania, Lesnar was going to outright squash him. However, when Lesnar also revealed to WWE that he planned on leaving the company, WWE opted for a new finish that resulted in Goldberg winning. Interestingly, the squash match formula for these two would be used 12 years later when Goldberg squashed Lesnar at the 2016 Survivor Series. Arnold Schwarzenegger passed on attending WrestleMania 3. 
Vince McMahon was intent on having major celebrity Arnold Schwarzenegger appear at WrestleMania 3. According to Jesse Ventura, Vince McMahon travelled in a private jet to the set of the movie Predator and offered an in-person invitation to Arnie. Arnold turned down the offer mainly due to things he'd been told by Jesse Ventura regarding McMahon and the company. The movie star would end up appearing in WWE a number of years later and even had a physical interaction with Triple H in 1999. John Cena drank three beers before his match at WrestleMania 34. A unique element of the early parts of WrestleMania 34 saw John Cena sit amongst the fans. Cena was waiting to see if The Undertaker was going to show up for their match and when Cena was sitting in the crowd, he began to drink beer and according to the man himself, he drank around three beers before the actual match. No wonder why he was running up the ramp. Ken Shamrock turned down IWGP title reign to appear at WrestleMania 13. Just before Ken Shamrock made his WrestleMania debut at WrestleMania 13, Shamrock turned down a major IWGP title match in favor of a WWE and a WrestleMania payday. It's widely believed that New Japan Pro Wrestling would have put the top title in the promotion on Shamrock, but for Shamrock, he was laser focused on becoming a huge star in WWE. Elias vs. John Cena was planned for WrestleMania 35. One of the most notable segments of WrestleMania 35 saw Elias get confronted by John Cena. This segment was extra special as Cena brought his classic Doctor of Thugonomics persona for one night only. According to Elias himself in a 2024 interview at a UK wrestling convention, that wasn't the original plan. Elias stated that the original plans for WrestleMania 35 were to see him and Cena collide in a singles match on the grandest stage. John Cena has the most WrestleMania title wins. But John Cena has become a WrestleMania staple over the past two decades, and Cena holds the record for the most WrestleMania world title wins. Cena has won a total of four world titles on the grand stage. The first of these was at WrestleMania 21, then Cena picked up world title gold at WrestleMania 25, 26, and 29. WrestleMania 1 suffered a major technical glitch. The inaugural WrestleMania event went out to 200 locations with an estimated 400,000 people watching. Unfortunately for the over 11,000 fans who traveled to the Civic Center to watch the show, they were unable to watch as a signal glitch meant that all they could see was a black screen. The fans in attendance were furious and it was said that things began to get violent. WWE would issue refunds and thankfully for them, the refunds didn't do too much damage to their revenue for the event itself. Hulk Hogan still holds this impressive record. The legendary Hulk Hogan still holds the record for the most WrestleMania main events. Hogan has main evented 8 in total, yet as WrestleMania 40 approaches, this could all be about to change. If Roman wrestles both nights and main events both nights of Mania, he will officially take over Hogan's record. WrestleMania 9 was actually held in a parking lot. A WrestleMania 9 was advertised as taking place at the historic Caesars Palace. And this was partly true, yet WWE built a stage and set for WrestleMania 9 in the parking lot. This was one of the more unique sets WWE have delivered for WrestleMania, and the event was labeled as the world's largest toga party. WWE wanted Bret Hart for WrestleMania 18. WWE initially wanted Bret Hart to return at WrestleMania 18 and play a key role in the main event. According to reports at the time, WWE wanted Hart to be the guest referee in the Chris Jericho vs Triple H main event. It was said that Hart would have been booked in a spot where he would punch Vince McMahon. Hart turned down the opportunity and for good reason, as Hart returning in the main event match where Triple H of all people was winning would have been an odd and awkward moment. WrestleMania's first ever double pin. Night 2 of WrestleMania 37 was main evented by an acclaimed triple threat match. Roman Reigns would defend his universal title against Edge and Daniel Bryan and Reigns would retain the title when he stacked both Edge and Bryan and pinned them simultaneously. This was truly shocking and it marked the first ever WrestleMania match to end with a stacked double pin. WrestleMania 16 only featured one singles match. WrestleMania 16, or WrestleMania 2000 as is often known as, only featured one singles match. Every match on the card featured more than two wrestlers, that is with the exception of the cat fight between Terry and the cat. It's unclear why WWE made this creative choice, yet WrestleMania 16 is the only WrestleMania event in company history to have just one 1v1 encounter. Mankind vs Vader almost happened at WrestleMania 13. Early plans for WrestleMania 13, according to Mick Foley, were to see him collide with Vader. This would have revisited their classic WCW rivalry, yet WWE unfortunately implemented Plan B and decided to team both men up for the show. 
The singles match would have been a welcome move as both men were directionless heading into WrestleMania 13 and the feud was exactly what Vader needed to move back up the card. Zero titles changed hands at WrestleMania 27. And title changes are a key part of WrestleMania as fans love to see new champions crowned. However, when it comes to WrestleMania 27, they decided to have every champion on the show retain. WrestleMania 27 is widely regarded as one of the most underwhelming WrestleMania events in company history and it's easy to see why. WrestleMania 13 is the least bought WrestleMania in history. WWE were gradually finding a new core audience by the time WrestleMania 13 came around, yet this didn't translate to pay-per-view buys. The show, which was headlined by Sid vs. The Undertaker for the WWE title, only attracted 237,000 pay-per-view buys. It's worth noting that WrestleMania 4 was lower, but that particular show was on closed circuit. Whilst the WrestleMania 13 buy rate was insanely low, the following year was evidence that WWE had turned the corner. WrestleMania 14, a pay-per-view that was headlined by two juggernauts in Shawn Michaels and Stone Cold, attracted over 700,000 pay-per-view buys. The Undertaker has wrestled and defeated every member of Evolution at WrestleMania. The Deadman has wrestled numerous iconic names at WrestleMania. Yet an interesting fact about his WrestleMania record is that the Deadman has wrestled and defeated every member of the legendary stable Evolution. When it comes to Triple H, the Deadman defeated him at WrestleMania 17, 27, and 28. The Undertaker wrestled Ric Flair at WrestleMania 18, Randy Orton at WrestleMania 21, and finally he competed against the animal Batista at WrestleMania 23. Heath Slater's impressive battle royal record. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal has been a WrestleMania fixture for the past decade, and for the first six installments of the match, Heath Slater was in every single one, and he was the only WWE star to be in the inaugural six. WrestleMania 6 Death Count WrestleMania 6 is mostly known for the iconic main event showdown between the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan. However, it's also known for a rather morbid statistic. A huge number of legendary performers who performed on the show are no longer with us. These names include the likes of Andre the Giant and the Ultimate Warrior. A total of 22 names that appeared on the show back in 1990 are sadly no longer with us. It took 36 WrestleMania events to have this gimmick match. The majority of WWE gimmick matches have been featured at WrestleMania events, but over the past 40 years, the show has featured Hell in a Cell matches, TLC matches, and even a Boneyard match. But when it comes to the Last Man Standing match, it took WWE until WrestleMania 36 to feature the match. WWE would use the popular match stipulation for the showdown between Randy Orton and Edge, and due to the event taking place at the Performance Center, it made for a bizarre watch to say the very least. Stone Cold Steve Austin never defended the WWE title at Mania. Stone Cold Steve Austin is widely regarded as one of the greatest WWE champions of all time. Yet a crazy fact about the Texas Rattlesnake is that he's never defended the top prize in WWE on the grandest stage. Every time Austin has competed in a WWE title match, he's walked in as the challenger. Austin's WWE title matches at WrestleMania include WrestleMania 14 vs Shawn Michaels and WrestleMania 15 and 17 vs The Rock. Triple H has the most WrestleMania losses. Our fans are always stunned to discover that Triple H has the most Mania losses out of anyone in the company history with 13. Triple H has always had the notion attached to him during his full-time run that he used his backstage influence to bury talent. But when it comes to WrestleMania events, that's simply not true. Over the years, the game has put over names including The Undertaker, Batista, John Cena, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins. Randy Orton and John Cena have never had a 1v1 match at Mania. A Randy Orton vs John Cena is one of the most celebrated feuds in WWE history. Yet one key fact about the notable rivalry is that they've never had a singles match at WrestleMania. The closest the two legends got to colliding 1v1 was at WrestleMania 24, yet WWE added Triple H into the mix. There was a strong belief at the time that this should have been a standard singles match between Orton and Cena, yet WWE clearly believed that the game's inclusion was the right move. All hope is in lost as both men have admitted how awesome it would be to collide in a singles match at WrestleMania, and at the start of 2024, this is what Orton had to say regarding a potential singles match during an appearance on The Bump. A dream match for me would be somehow to find myself in a situation where I'm fighting Cena at WrestleMania for the title. I don't know how you get there, I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but I have never wrestled John at WrestleMania in a singles match. We had some wars back in the day, so being able to revisit that after all this, I think it's not only something that I would want, I think the fans would eat it up too. Rob Van Dam is undefeated at WrestleMania. 
WWE Hall of Famer Rob Van Dam is undefeated on the grandest stage. RVD has won four matches at WrestleMania, including picking up a big win over William Regal and helping Team ECW defeat the new breed. RVD did suffer a loss during the pre-show at WrestleMania 19, yet WWE don't count the Sunday Night Heat portion of the prior WrestleMania events as canon. Other big names to be undefeated at WrestleMania include Demolition, Sable, Legion of Doom, Virgil, Mr. T, and yeah, even Michael Cole. The Undertaker's brother passed away before his final match. When The Undertaker was filming his match with AJ Styles in a Boneyard match at WrestleMania 36, during filming, he learned that his brother Timothy had died of a heart attack. Taker received a call on the set from his niece, who told him the very tragic news. Nevertheless, Undertaker still managed to finish the filming of the match. WrestleMania 4 holds the record for the most matches. WrestleMania 4, which featured Macho Man Randy Savage becoming WWE Champion, holds the record for the most matches in a single day at WrestleMania with 16 in total. The card was truly stacked, and this was predominantly down to WWE holding a tournament to crown a new WWE Champion. Speaking of Savage, he competed in four matches on the show, giving him the record for the most WrestleMania matches on a single broadcast. The first ever submission victory in a WrestleMania main event took place at WrestleMania 20. It took 20 years to book a WrestleMania main event to end via a submission. This came at WrestleMania 20 when Chris Benoit tapped out Triple H to become the new world champion. Submission finishes in the main event would become much more common following Benoit's win as names such as John Cena and Daniel Bryan won main event matches with their respective finishes. These huge names have never won at WrestleMania. Winning at a WrestleMania event should be one of the highlights of a wrestler's career. Yet unfortunately, some wrestlers never received the honor. Names including Goldust, Shinsuke Nakamura, Asuka, the Dudley Boys, William Regal, Wade Barrett, and R-Truth have competed at several WrestleMania events and they've never come out with the W. Now for Asuka, Nakamura, and Truth, due to them being still active in WWE, there is still hopefully a chance they could pick up a win at WrestleMania and remove themselves from this unfortunate statistic. Triple H almost boxed at WrestleMania 17. Before Triple H was paired with The Undertaker for WrestleMania 17, WWE had two ideas in mind for the game. One idea was for the game to face Ray Lewis, and this match could have also included Warren Sapp. The Rock of all people offered a great account on the WWE's plans during an interview with Dan Patrick. There was a time where we were actually recruiting both guys, Lewis and Warren Sapp, to come in and have a big match. And we got him very close in having a big match, bringing in Ray Lewis. And we were going to have a big tag team match with myself, Ray Lewis as tag team partners against whoever the top heels were at the time. Probably Triple H, I think, and somebody else. It was going to be a big WrestleMania match, but we could never. It had nothing to do with the creative, just more so scheduling. But we were very, very excited, so we came very close to that. But both of these guys would have done great in the ring. They're just really, really exceptional athletes. The other idea was for Triple H to box Mike Tyson and the fight would have been six rounds, but according to the game, due to Tyson's costly asking price, the plans were scrapped. There have only been two cage matches in WrestleMania history. Despite the steel cage match being one of the most commonly used gimmick matches in WWE, it's only been featured twice at WrestleMania. The first time came when Hulk Hogan collided with King Kong Bundy at WrestleMania 2, then 30 years later at WrestleMania 37, Braun Strowman would take on Shane McMahon. Only two people have main evented every WrestleMania they've competed at. A main eventing WrestleMania is an honor that only a select few wrestlers have attained, but for two wrestlers, they managed to main event every WrestleMania they competed in. Lawrence Taylor competed in one WrestleMania in the main event slot, and that was WrestleMania 11 versus Bam Bam Bigelow. The second name is Sid, whose matches versus Hulk Hogan and The Undertaker were both given the main event placement on their respective shows. John Cena was the first person to point at the WrestleMania sign. Wrestlers pointing towards the WrestleMania sign is a common practice for the Royal Rumble winner, yet the crazy thing about the tradition is that it only started in 2008. John Cena was the first person to deliver the triumphant point and it became custom that every year the Rumble winner would point towards the WrestleMania sign as Pyro would hit the arena or stadium. The Undertaker has main evented WrestleMania in four different decades. Now, if you look back in the 90s, Undertaker took on Psycho Sid at WrestleMania 13 in 1997. In the 2000s, The Undertaker vs. Batista and Undertaker vs. Edge at WrestleMania 23 and 24 respectively. 2010s, Undertaker vs. Shawn Michaels and Undertaker vs. Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 25, 26 and 33 respectively. And in the 2020s of Undertaker vs. AJ Styles at WrestleMania 36. Kurt Angle and Sting almost wrestled at WrestleMania 18. 
Kurt Angle took on Kane at WrestleMania 18, and whilst Kane isn't exactly a mid-carder, it didn't feel like the feud came out of nowhere, and Angle was destined for a bigger spot. It turned out that WWE wanted Angle to either face Sting or Bret Hart, and if Sting came into the company, this would have marked Sting's official debut in the WWE. Angle would discuss these early creative pitches during a 2021 edition of his podcast. Yeah, there were talks about it, I heard about it, but I'm not surprised that it didn't occur, you know. They couldn't get Sting to sign that early, you know. Bret Hart at that particular time, you know, he was still wrestling. I did contact Bret, I'm the one that contacted him, yeah. I called him and said, hey, I want you to wrestle at WrestleMania. I think it would be a dream match. You won't have to do any of the work. I'll do all the bumping and selling and he immediately said no. I was like, okay, well, I appreciate it. Nice meeting you, Brett. Cameo Mania. A WrestleMania over the years has been prone to delivering cameos from future main event level talent. Take, for instance, future WCW World Champion DDP would be the driver at WrestleMania 6. CM Punk would portray a gangster at WrestleMania 22, and at WrestleMania 30, names including Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks, and Alexa Bliss played a pivotal role in Triple H's special entrance. The Undertaker often used future WWE talent for his special entrances, and for his entrance at WrestleMania 21, one of the Druids just so happened to be future WWE Champion Kofi Kingston. WWE planned Hulk Hogan vs. Zeus for WrestleMania 6. Original plans for WrestleMania 6 were to see Hulk Hogan take on Zeus. According to Tom Lister Jr., these plans were scrapped when Hogan refused to drop the title to him, and as a result, the main event of the show was changed, and the Ultimate Warrior would enter the proceedings. Ultimately, this was the right move, as although Warrior was limited in the ring, he was insanely over, and Hogan vs. Zeus could have been one of the worst main events in WrestleMania history. Tatanka has had the biggest gap between wrestling at WrestleMania. Tatanka randomly returned to WWE for a one-off appearance at WrestleMania 32. He would appear in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, and this appearance marked 23 years since he last appeared on the grander stage, giving him the biggest gap between WrestleMania matches. Ricky Steamboat does come close, but only with 21 years. WrestleMania 7 had to move location. WrestleMania attendance always leads to a ton of discourse, particularly on social media. And thankfully for WWE, social media wasn't a thing when WrestleMania 7 delivered the lowest attended WrestleMania event of all time. Just over 16,000 fans attended the show headlined by Sergeant Slaughter vs. Hulk Hogan, and the crazy thing about the show is that it almost occurred in a big stadium. WWE moved the show to a smaller arena due to poor ticket sales, and to save face, they embarrassingly claimed that it was due to a bomb scare. WrestleMania 7 was indeed the lowest attended WrestleMania, but that was until 2020 when they were forced to host WrestleMania 36 at the WWE Performance Center in front of zero fans. Snoop Dogg has won more matches at WrestleMania than Asuka. One of the most disappointing elements of Asuka's main roster run is that she has yet to win at WrestleMania. Asuka has lost every single match she's competed in on the grandest stage, and even Snoop Dogg has won more matches at WrestleMania than the Empress of Tomorrow. Hell, even counts Snooki in that. She's even won at WrestleMania. WWE wanted Abyss to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania 23. In 2006, when Abyss's TNA contract was set to expire, WWE offered Abyss a lucrative contract that would have included a WrestleMania match with The Undertaker. Shockingly, Abyss turned down the offer and decided to stay with TNA. When this news surfaced, fans were ultimately let down as Abyss was incredible in the ring, and he and the Deadman would have had a tremendous chemistry in the squared circle. In relation to Abyss's take on this decision years later, during a Reddit AMA, he revealed that he had no regrets regarding turning the match down. Yes, that's true, I ended up staying with TNA, and I'm so happy that I did. I have no regrets. I was an original member of TNA since the beginning, and I couldn't leave something I helped build from the ground up. Abyss would eventually find himself in WWE years later, but not as an in-ring talent. For the past several years, the TNA Hall of Famer has worked as a producer in WWE, a role in which he received widespread praise for. WrestleMania 2 took place on a Monday. Traditionally, WrestleMania events have taken place on a Sunday, but that is until the past several years where WWE have decided that WrestleMania should be a two-night showcase. Bizarrely for WrestleMania 2, Vince McMahon decided to book the show to take place on a Monday. This was an odd move that made a little business sense, as McMahon realized the error of his ways the following year as WrestleMania would revert to the Sunday slot. Vince McMahon wanted Vladimir Kozlov to break the streak. Between 2008 to 2009, Vince McMahon was insistent on Vladimir Kozlov being a major player in the company. Unfortunately for McMahon, the fans never connected with Kozlov, and despite this, McMahon had a crazy idea that would see Kozlov end The Undertaker's WrestleMania win streak. 
This was going to be at WrestleMania 25, and the backlash if McMahon proceeded with this booking move would have been insane. But thankfully, McMahon came to his senses, and instead of booking Kozlov versus the Deadman for WrestleMania 25, he opted for Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker, which resulted in an all-time classic. Stone Cold Steve Austin was rushed to hospital before WrestleMania 19. A Stone Cold Steve Austin was set to retire at WrestleMania 19, yet the night before the final match of his iconic career, Austin found himself in hospital. Austin had run himself into the ground and the former WWE Champion revealed in his autobiography that he thought he was having a heart attack. My heartbeat might be doing 160 or 180 beats per minute. It just feels like my heart's gonna jump out of my chest. I've been fatigued in matches before, totally out of gas and winded, but this was scaring the hell out of me. I'm sure I'm having a heart attack. According to Austin's close friend Jim Ross on Grill and JR, Austin was overtraining and become reliant on energy drinks. Well, it was scary. So, you know, he felt like he was letting a lot of people down and he was overtraining and those damn energy drinks. Steve was not sleeping. He was over caffeinating himself and his body reacted by just backing away. So when we all went to bed on Saturday night, in the middle of the night, we didn't know if he was going to be able to wrestle Rock or not in the main event. Austin pushed through and he was able to retire in a fantastic match against his arch rival, The Rock. The Undertaker refused to let this wrestler break the streak. The WWE shocked the world at WrestleMania 30 when Brock Lesnar defeated Taker and the illustrious streak at WrestleMania 30. However, the streak was going to be broken much earlier. On an episode of Something to Wrestle With with Bruce Pritchard, Bruce said that Vince McMahon called him one day and told him that he wanted Mark Henry to end the streak at WrestleMania. Upon hearing this, Bruce made sure to let Undertaker know what the plans were, but both Bruce Pritchard and Undertaker were unhappy with this decision, with Bruce saying that he didn't feel like Mark Henry was ready just yet and that there weren't any long-term plans for Mark Henry. Undertaker being the man that he is, even though he didn't like the plans, he said that if that's what the boss wants, he'll follow the instructions. Of course, Mark Henry didn't end a streak and Undertaker defeated him, keeping the streak intact. The Big Show wanted to have a reverse Undertaker record at WrestleMania. The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak is legendary in the world of wrestling. Taker would go all the way to WrestleMania 30 undefeated, ranking up 21 wins in a row. Of course, it ended with Brock Lesnar defeating Taker and ending the streak. However, instead of a win streak at WrestleMania, The Big Show pitched the idea that he wanted to do a reverse streak of losses. He mentioned, I've always prided myself on doing what really was best for business. The only time I had an ego is when I wanted to have a reverse Undertaker record at WrestleMania and they messed it up. I was like Norton 6 and they let me win one. Imagine being Norton 22 all time. Kim Kardashian was paid this much to read the attendance at WrestleMania 24. Kim Kardashian wasn't really a celebrity that was needed at WrestleMania 24. Nevertheless, WWE managed to pay her a bag of $25,000 just to read the attendance number that night. Jonathan Coachman told this story during an interview on ESPN Radio, and apparently she had a hard time remembering the number and needed a card. WrestleMania 27 is the oldest WrestleMania where all the competitors on the card are still alive today. WrestleMania 26 was the oldest until Shad Gaspard passed away as he was part of the Battle Royal. If you look at WrestleMania 25, Jimmy Snooker and Roddy Piper are no longer with us. WrestleMania 24 had Umaga on the card. WrestleMania 23 had Chris Benoit and Umaga on the card. WrestleMania 22 had Fissera and Chris Benoit. WrestleMania 21 had Eddie Guerrero and so forth. Roman Reigns is the only member of the Anawahi family to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Roman Reigns was the first and only member of the Anawahi family to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania. This match came in the main event of WrestleMania 33, and this fact comes as a huge surprise, especially when you consider that the dead man has had epic feuds with members of the family including The Rock, Yokozuna, and Rikishi. The match between Reigns and the dead man was initially designed to be The Undertaker's final match in WWE, yet due to the poor quality on offer, The Undertaker decided to have numerous more matches in WWE before retiring at WrestleMania 36 against AJ Styles, riding off into the sunset. But there you have it folks, 30 minutes of shocking WrestleMania facts. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.